sorry about that. Uh, uh, so I wonder what's going to happen to Dave Allen now then. I wonder what's going to happen to him. Uh, I don't know. Do I care? Yeah, of course I do care. Of course I do. Uh, of course I do. I care about everybody who's ever been in my life. Of course I do. You've got to do, haven't you? David's likeable, isn't he? My kid's mum loves him to bits. Yeah, that's all it is. Let's uh, uh, have a look. So I'm happy with how things are going. Do you know what? Boxing has probably given me that bit of a G up to get me some sorted. Uh, Carl Froch is the one that can take the credit for me losing all that weight, you know. Because when somebody will have that ilk or you, have, or, you, or you look up to says to you, you were saying that last year, so I kept saying, I'm going to get a gastric, I'm going to get a gastric. I said that last year, but you were right. Well, when he said that to me, we're on my birthday 2011. I still didn't have it till 2013. It took me another 18 months before I had it. And I got it done, didn't I? So. Lal and Goa Spice. Do you know what I might do? I might just go on my own because if I take them you'll be ordering all sorts it'd be, it'd be a massive bill and I don't want Lal to think that we're piss techers because it's not like doing anything for somebody in the boxing industry is it or some of Dennis's mates and you can go out on that and somebody will pick a tab up for 30-40 people it's a bit different with small businesses isn't it and I don't want me to take piss, I don't want it to appear that we took piss because something like this always, I always feel uncomfortable about when people see, you can come round and have a night on us in restaurant which obviously means, you know, you can order something to eat and it'd be free, does not it? But some people can think, oh it might be booze, there's booze included, before you know where you are they're bringing all the family aren't they? And there's taxis pulling up and they're ordering wine and that I don't want it to get to that and it makes me feel uncomfortable so I think I'm probably just going to go down on my own, get a shirt on and trousers, go down on my own and just order something to eat and just do a film in there and if the food's good, it's, I'll say if it's crap, I'll probably say one of what I'm <laughs> probably end up getting a slap. But it's nice of him, somebody to come and, and offer you that, isn't it? Isn't that nice? So, well, let go of spice. What was the other one? Uh, Dana White. Dana. Dana White. Ah! Get to know too much, you lot. So, I think that's about it, really. I'm going to get the up for quarter past three now, huh? Let me think. Because I'm not going to have to live on them. So now I don't think I'll be eating any of these again. God, the people actually live on them. Do boxers and athletes actually have them instead of a meal? I don't know, but uh, so I think that's about it really. I'm gonna get on my way up to Glynn's now. I'll keep it rolling. And uh, I'll be 
the middle field people, see if they want to come on. See if we can keep the conversation going for a while. Could ring Stig up, couldn't we, Bert? No. Stig's alright, Bert. I'm waking up in the morning to 30 sex messages off him. He is full on. If you give Stig a job in Dennis's office as a promoter, all day all they do is uh, promote his job. Uh, uh, Could ring Luke's medley, can't we? But it's our favourite video, isn't it? We'll just keep it, we'll keep it, just keep it as it is, and uh, have a little think about what we can talk about. Spencer Peerum, we can talk about Sky Company, man. What's that question? Somebody just sent me in. So what? Charlie Pritchard, keep going mate, like the Billy Joe Stones video and showing up, oh, I'll not read the rest of that out. <laughs> okay. You see, I'm in an awkward situation is some of these aren't giving me permission to read it out so I won't know, but for example, this is why I don't like reading off this, not in my driving glasses. I've only got these glasses with me. These are no good for reading. I see your video of you in your front room and thought you were sitting in my front room, Porky. It freaked me out for a minute. Glad to see your channel doing well. Well, I don't know about doing well, mate. It's uh, not making any money. Those stats on Billy Joe Sona's opposition last night against... last the. Uh, Sorry, those stats on BJS op opposition last night against 755 and went the distance. I think he means. Uh, I mentioned that Billy Joe Saunders had just fought that guy Annie at weekend, that coercer or something, whatever he's called. And that guy Billy's just knocked out in the 11th round. He's just been in with a guy in September. Who was. Seven, five, and five. If you're fighting somebody that's got seven wins and five losses and five draws, you beat that person. How do you then get a shot at the world title? Can somebody explain that to me? I know we all keep saying that the WBC, people keep saying we be crooks. Well, So now I look at it, what's the WBO mean then if they're getting world title shots off of winning like that? Uh -oh. For example, here's another one. Oh, I'm just reading out the rest of what he just said. I like Billy Joe Sons, but sick of hearing him and people say put a top guy in with him and I'll perform. He had all the American shorts on last night like Tyson did and then he performs like that. I can't see how he beats one of those top guys. I think Jacobs beats Billy Joe easy on on the back of that performance at weekend. Take it easy, Porky. I see where you're coming from and you know I'm disappointed with Billy Joe so as well because because and it brought my heart to do that video because you know, when you follow somebody from when they turn pro, you get into their story, don't you? You know, and, and, and you, fo you watch them on social media and you watch their life, don't you? And I follow Frankie Gavin. And I follow Billy Joe Saunders. And when I saw that fight that Frankie Gavin had with Curtis Woodhouse, after that fight, 
I thought, oh my god, that was the first chink in the armour. And Barry McGuigan said after the fight, and he wouldn't have got he wouldn't get away with saying that now if he was Sky as a commentator, but Barry McGuigan said we could now be looking at the biggest waste of talent that's ever been in this country. Don't forget, Frankie Gavin, he won that gold medal in Chicago at the World Amateurs. It's, it's the same format as the Olympics. If you're good at Worlds or Olympics and you get a medal, you're classed as big nose for promoters to sign you. Now, when Frankie Gavin squeaked by Curtis Woodhouse, he beat Curtis, but we only just beat him. That was like fighting KSI at the time, wasn't it? Curtis Woodhouse, a footballer who went into boxing now. Curtis likes to tell the story that he gave up thousands of pounds to get into boxing. Curtis, not not naughty naughty. We're both though technically that's not true, don't we? Technically not true. Curtis won't slide one in boxing at 26, that's why in, in football that's why he came boxing, but he can fight, but when Frank well when Curtis Woodhouse is getting in with somebody that's saying they're all he's saying that people are saying he's already world class and roughing him up and performing like he did. I don't know. I once went to a Curtis Woodhouse fight right, and he stuck nuts on a guy. And he went back to the corner and he goes, he just fucking nutted me. They were funny as hell. But, uh, it's funny Curtis, I like him, but he performed out in his skin that night against Frankie Gavin, but when you follow somebody from day one and then that happens, you feel let down, don't you, about all the hype? And I felt let down. And it wasn't until years later when I met Frankie Gavin and I got him to come up to Dennis's. And he actually sat in Dennis's office with his two mates and we all agreed to work together for an IBO World title fight. The show got cancelled, didn't we, two weeks ago. I was responsible for all that. That's a true story. Quote me on it, ask Frankie. But it didn't work out. And then you've got people like Steffi Bull saying that Frankie Gavin's no good and all this and that. Why? Because he bashed you in sparring. A British and Commonwealth champion who won a world amateur gold medal and fought for the world title against Kell Brook is no good. Come on. Of course he's good. He's just probably not dedicated, he's got skills to burn, like James Tony. I'm probably not going to be able to drink that because I'll be sick. But getting back to the the questions. Oh, we were on about the guy there. How did he get a world title fight off beating somebody seven five and five? Do you know what I mean? Uh, well, for instance, Paul Smith. Paul Smith for... Let me tell you, this is another thing. This is another thing I want to go on about. How promoters can pull, can pull a few strings for you. I'll tell you a little one here. This is a good one, this. Right. I, mean, I don't mind Paul Smith, actually. Because I were a Paul Smith fan. I've got a mate in my phone here who gave me his first defeat. And they were devastated, Paul Smith. Uh, Paul Smith box, right? Paul Smith, 38 and 7. 
11. 37 years of age. Started out as a middleweight. Right, miss, this is my argument. Paul Smith loses to George Groves, yeah? Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Sorry, sorry. Right, let me start again. I'm going to go through some of them. I want to put this to bed once and for all. I'm going to put this to bed once and for all. In fact, we'll leave it for another video of this. We'll leave this for another video. We'll leave it for another video. In fact, I'll do it now. We'll do it now then, right? We'll do it now. So, peace out. Keep on chucking. Keep supporting boxing. I'm going to do a Paul Smith video now. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys at Sheffield. Alright? Nobody else is getting a shout out. Innovation Alloys. The South Yorkshire package in here. That's it. Bump, bump.